Now I'm coming through too loud. Oh lord. Oh lord, that's very loud. Why is it so very loud? I don't know. I'm sorry, Kane. I'm just gonna keep talking. It's gonna be real loud until I fix it. Do 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 turn that down. That's too loud. Oh no no, very bad. Okay, that should be better. It's been almost a hundred videos in the Forgotten Race review. Yeah, we've been at this a while. Some may say too long even, but I mean, bloat is as bloat does. What's going on guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel today at the request of the Black Dragon Disciple, Mr. AJ Parker. It's time finally for the last of the Genie Kin races. Today we're cracking open Blood of the Elements once again to talk about this boy and his happy newt newts. Yeah, it's the Sylph. If you have requests, they go down there. If you're a patron and you have requests, you get to jump to the front of a very long line. Today, this episode of the Forgotten Race Review was brought to you in part by Hateproof Mufasa. Thanks for your help, man. Now, off we go. So on planet Earth, the Sylph is a mythological air spirit. The term originates in the 16th century works of Paracelsus, who describes the Sylph as an invisible being of the air they can be found all across subsequent literary and occult works, because there's not a lot originating with Paracelsus himself, up to and including, you know, the Pathfinder role-playing game. In Pathfinder, usually the Sylph can pass as a human, except for in times of stress where the subtle breath of air that always seems to accompany them becomes an angry gust. The Sylphs are unusually pale and thin, and upon close inspection, they often bear complex patterns of faint blue or gray lines on their skin resembling tattoos. As you might have guessed, the Sylph comes from the union of humans and the Jinn. The children resulting from such unions are intelligent, uncanny, and often possessed of a powerful attraction to secrets and forbidden knowledge. When a young Sylph realizes that they aren't quite human, well, that can be rather traumatic, especially if their nature is revealed by an involuntary reaction to a stressful event, doubly so if they live in a region where genie kin are distrusted. Nevertheless, their lust for secrets often acts as a stepping stone to the life of an adventurer. Some venture out into the world in the hopes of learning more about their elemental heritages, especially if this was concealed from them. Others leave to flee small towns whose secrets are all too familiar. In some cases, the reason for adventuring doesn't matter so much as just kind of a general search for answers. In any case, well, let's break out those stats. So again, a sylph can come from any humanoid race, make a deal with a djinn, have an elemental bloodline, things of that nature. Yeah, sometimes these will get spit out. That said, their age of adulthood, height and weight are determined by their parent race with the max age for this race, of course, being 250 plus 6 percentage dice worth of years. Yeah, you're gonna be here a while. Unless you fall off a cliff and hurt yourself. Wait, you have Featherfall. You can't do that. I mean, I guess that's kind of a spoiler. My bad! Let's look at those racial traits. The Sylph gains a plus 2 to its dexterity and intelligence, but has a minus 2 to constitution, being quick and insightful, but slight and delicate. They are medium native outsiders with a base speed of 30 feet, dark vision, electricity resistance 5, and the ability to cast Featherfall once a day, with their caster level equaling their total level. In addition, Sylph Sorcerers with the Elemental Air bloodline treat their Charisma score as 2 points higher for all Sorcerer spells and class abilities. Sylph Spellcasters with the Air Domain use domain powers and spells at plus 1, caster level. And of course we've got a couple variants here, the Smoke Soul and Storm Soul, but those are their own requests. I've never GM'd for a Sylph before, but I have been in a party with a Sylph, and being in a party with a Sylph did save my butt in Rise of the Rune Lords so so long ago. Warning! This is a Rise of the Rune Lords spoiler! When you fight Black Maga, you know, that scary monster that you're supposed to run from, which is to my knowledge, like 5% of all the monsters in Rune Lords, you know, a monster that can shut off the caster's ability to teleport. It's real nice to just be on your war cat and jump the dam with the Sylph 
on the saddle of the war cat with you, and then the sylph casts Featherfall on your war cat, and you kind of just breeze on down. So yes, always remember to give thanks to your floating air peoples, because they're pretty useful. GMing for one makes me feel a lot more comfortable about building environments where, like, there will be a lot of scary falls and things, because somebody in the party will have an out. And battles in 3D are often a lot more fun and engaging for your party because it's not just a flat plane and these tokens are going to run at these tokens and bam, and there's a fight and stuff. Thinking in 3D makes everybody kind of go back and pay attention again. And on the subject of 3D encounters, the Breeze Kissed alternate racial trait is real good if you're not playing a sorcerer because as a swift action you can you know, slap on a plus two racial bonus to your AC against non-magical ranged attacks. Once per day, you can make a bull rush or trip against one creature within 30 feet using these winds. Of course, doing so means you can't protect yourself, but a ranged bull rush is enough to push somebody off a cliff, I would imagine. And a plus two bonus to AC is really nice in a world where there might be a bunch of guys shooting at you. Yeah, no, the wind is on your side, at your back and that's pretty powerful, especially at low level play, or in games where you're fighting a lot of mooks who might just have like non-magical javelins to try to hit you when you're flying and casting spells down. But that is all I have to say about that. What do you guys think about the Sylph? Have we played one? Have we been in a party with one? Throw in the comments, we'll keep the conversation going. And yeah, okay, I know, I talked about doing the Frost Giant as a race, and kind of begged for it, I suppose. I, uh, I went back and looked at the Frost Giant, and it's a little too powerful. I thought Giants might be a little weaker on balance and thus okay to be in parties. Yeah, not so much. So, assuming we don't get patrons sniped, fingers crossed, next week it in fact will be the Archon Blooded Azimar. See you then.